I really think Savannah is a very beautiful city. I think we have one of the most beautiful urban forests in, in the world. I've been to London and France and all over. I've been to the Orient and I really think it's a very, very beautiful city. General Oglethorpe planned it well with our squares and, and roadways and whatnot. And our wonderful oak trees and beautiful uh, azalea bushes and it's just a really special place. I have traveled all over the world and I, I really know what different areas are like because I've lived in many different places. And I chose to live in Savannah because I think Savannah is one of the most beautiful areas in the world. The more people from Savannah travel and see other places, I think the more they learn to value Savannah. a painting I did a few years ago and I was it's all my paintings are painted live I, uh, I I don't use photographs I go to the site and I paint this painting has become sort of my iconographic painting for a lot of things I do I call it a storm over the coast to me it symbolizes the challenges we have people that live on the coast of Georgia with global warming sea rise uh, over development uh, industrialization. There's just a, a, a huge number of challenges, but I think that if we keep in mind the value of what it is we're trying to protect the coast here, uh, it'll inspire us to make the right choices to protect the coast in the future. The objective of our group is to oppose the expansion of liquid natural gas in Chatham County, Georgia. And the ultimate objective of our group is not to have liquid natural gas in Chatham County, Georgia. Golly, 20 some odd years ago, longer than that, when they first were built, we really didn't think much of it. The whole LNG idea came of, was born in the late 1970s and several different plants were built because of the very high price of gas. Almost immediately after they were built, the price of gas went down and there was no particular reason to import natural gas anymore. So all these uh, LNG facilities were closed down. The, the tanks sat on our landscape. They loomed on the landscape for about 20 years um, and, and, the, and they, they weren't being used. El Paso put them in mothballs and kept them there, and people got used to seeing them. And it wasn't open again. None of these facilities were really put back into operation until uh, after 2000. So 2001 was when the Elba facility was reopened. Up until the time that we started this campaign of education, nine out of 10 people here didn't know what LNG was. I think that it's important to keep in mind that the tanks themselves are a huge hazard, but they're fixed and they are a mile or two miles away from most uh, heavily habitated areas. But I think the tankers are even more dangerous because they're mobile. The chief advisor on terrorism to the White House for three presidents, Richard Clark, he believes that the LNG operations are the biggest hazard, terrorist hazard in the United States. If people just would understand this, then they would do something. Every person that visits here and drives out to Tybee sees this catastrophe waiting to happen sitting there right over the marshes. There's two, two natural disasters that, that could seriously affect the LNG tanks. One is a hurricane and storm surge. And if we had a serious earthquake, again, it's, it's not at all, it's impossible to calculate what effect that might have on those tanks. Our planning is short, short circuited in my opinion, but we're not, we're not looking ahead. There are very economical and safe ways of regasifying it and storing it, and that's offshore. The tanks will have to be dismantled 
and new facilities will have to be reconstructed offshore, away from Savannah. And if it were to explode offshore, it's not going to hurt us, like it can here. They'll be more expensive, but the city will be safer and sleep better as a result. That's what makes the most sense to me, and that's the new way of doing it. These tanks aren't, they're not supplying jobs for Savannah people. There are only about 50 some odd employees out there, and most of those are small security, private security agencies. You know, they say, and I can, I can understand their position, we've dumped all this money in, into it. Well, they dumped the money into it 20, 30 years ago, and then the bottom fell out of the market, and it lay dormant for 20 some odd years. And now uh, the market's gotten better because of the oil crisis. The county commissioners have done one thing. They have in some way arranged for this company to have their land. They, are the, they have acquiesced when the company has valued their land very low so that they escape millions of dollars worth of taxes. Uh, for some reason, the county commissioners are allowing them to get away with this. It just seemed to me that the director of our emergency management agency at the time would always be right there with the El Paso people answering my questions faster than El Paso could and assuring me, no problem, Judy. And it's very hard to get the community, the leaders, to be concerned when the person they look to to give them the bottom line is telling them, don't worry about it. The only reason proposals have been defeated is that the community say no. And Savannah is almost, there's almost unique in its lack of will to protest the expansion and the existence of this facility. Maybe it's the Southern tradition. Maybe we're just not concerned. Maybe the Southerners are just sleeping. I'm a Southerner, I can say. I just wish that we could wake up down here a little bit more and be more careful about our planning. And, and and keep our beautiful city. I mean, golly Moses, Savannah, Savannah is just an incredibly beautiful place. We have lots of SCAD students walking around all over the place downtown. The city's a lot safer than it used to be, and, and, and the design of the city is incredible. The old buildings are beautiful, and the oak trees are incredible. It's a tourist haven, and to have this thing sitting out here, this LNG facility sitting out there is, is just an anathema to me. It's wrong. It's dangerous. You need to open your eyes. You need to stop averting your eyes. When you drive to Tybee, instead of ignoring that great big cluster of tanks, uh, I think you ought to think about what they are. Don't walk around trying to stick your head in the sand like an ostrich and think that that's a good strategy for life. Look around you and, and take an honest look at what you see and, and don't avoid looking at things because you think they're unpleasant to look at. It's those things that you really, it's your duty as a citizen to look at and it's your duty as a, to yourself and your family to take take the right action and, and make sure that, that people don't do the wrong thing with your community and your future. And understand that ultimately they're the ones that are responsible. It's not, it's not the commissioners and it's not the, the businessmen, corporate guys that run Elba Island or the port. Uh, it's them. If they're not responsible, then none of these other people will be responsible. You can be sure of that. Petrol products generate a lot of money. And it seems to me when you start looking at generating a lot of money for stockholders versus the health and safety of the people around the facilities, the money shouldn't win, in my judgment. Safety should win.